Aw oh, yeah! Welcome to episode number two of Sawdust and Wanderlust. Today, we're making a Polaroid picture hanger slash sunglass hanger. It's literally the same thing, so call it whatever you're going to use it for. But the catch here, we're doing it for under five greenbacks. I said under five buckaroonies. Oh, it's crazy talk. We can't do that. Yeah, we can. And we will. You know why? So we've got sound effects and other crazy dramatic sized things. <laughs> My nice glasses too. Let's build it! Whenever you're getting your wood, it's always a good idea to take an extra 5-10 minutes checking out the pieces, making sure they don't have any bows or twists and that they're straight. Some of these pieces of wood are gorgeous and some of them are furry which means a lot more sanding for me which I don't like and then some of these pieces are just plain twisted. This piece looks like the ugly stick that I got beat with when I was a kid. Also, pro tip, bring a utility knife with you. These things come in bundles and you're gonna go through a ton. And instead of passing employees and waiting forever to get somebody to cut it for you, just go ahead and get it done yourself. I'm using my miter saw to cut the mitered corners on my one by twos. You can make this project any size that you want, but if you like the size that I'm making it, the dimensions are 35 inches tall by 20 inches wide. I know some of you aren't going to have a miter saw at your house, so what I did is went ahead and got a miter box and miter box saw. The saw itself was 10 bucks and the box was 5 I thought it was going to be really straightforward and easy to use, and for the most part it was, but there's a bit of a learning curve when it came to actually getting the saw in there and getting a nice clean cut without really pushing everything around. You want to let the saw do the work for you, nice light passes. Once you've got everything cut, go ahead and piece it together real quick. Make sure that all the angles are lining up and everything looks good. Now it's time to sand. I did most of the sanding by hand. I didn't want to use my desktop sander for this just because I didn't want to take too much material off. I like the wood to have a little bit of roughness as long as there's no splinters. I like to see saw marks. I think it gives it a good rustic character. I did use my desktop sander for one part and that was just where the lumber yard printed on their stamp and I could have done that by hand but it would have taken longer than I wanted to do so I just popped it on the desktop sander real quick. Whenever you are sanding it is a good idea to wear a respirator. I don't have mine, I don't know where it is so this is all I had on hand and something is better than nothing even if it does make you look like Bane from Batman. There's no sawdust here Batman. So since I went ahead and cut two of the sunglass holders slash Polaroid displays, I'm going to do two different colors. I've got this one which is Jacko Bean and Vintage Aqua. I'm stuck with these choices because this is actually an Etsy order that I've got with these colors right now. So I'm going to use these. And then for the other one I chose Weathered Oak and Golden Oak. And since both of these said the word Oak, I figured that it would look Okay. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm like this. For staining, I like to apply a lot of stain, let it soak it up for a few minutes. Now you want to be careful when you're doing more than one stain. Either change out your gloves in between handling the different stained pieces of wood, or wipe them off with a rag that's got some mineral spirits or paint thinner on there. That way you're not gonna be messing up the colors of each of the pieces. Uh, 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 uh. 
If you saw my last video, you know the way that I like the stain. Like I said, apply a lot and then let it soak it up. And after that, take some paint thinner or mineral spirits, put it on a rag and wipe it down and you will see a tremendous difference in the contrast between the saturated wood grain and the places of the wood that it hasn't absorbed it where it's just kind of sitting on top and giving it a monotone kind of color. For the other Polaroid display, sunglass hanger, I really didn't like the way that these colors turned out. The weathered oak put pretty much no color into the wood and the golden oak that I'm familiar with gave it a nice light brown color that I knew was gonna happen. So what I ended up doing was I took some weathered gray and threw it over top of the two pieces that had the weathered oak and I really liked the way this color turned out since the wood didn't get to absorb all of the weathered gray since it had already sucked up some of that weathered oak. I like this color more than just the weathered gray on its own so I'll probably try to replicate this in the future. The way that I put this thing together, toss a little bit of glue in the mitered corners, line it up as best as possible, clamp it down, and shoot some brad nails through. I use one and a half inch brad nails. Doesn't matter what size you use, as long as the nail will go through both pieces of wood that you're putting together. If you don't have a brad nailer, do the exact same process, but use finished nails and a hammer instead. I was gonna show you this very straightforward looking way to do it that I saw Mike Montgomery over on Modern Builds make but I butchered the whole thing so instead of having a few minutes of me making a fool out of myself which I already pretty much have in here um, just go check it out on his channel it is Modern Builds picture frame build Mike makes some awesome videos so check that out after you've got the frame built flip it on its side and clamp it down. The next step is to break out the measuring tape and measure out where you're gonna be drilling your holes for the screw eyes. If you're making this a Polaroid picture hanger, it's really not too important the placement of the screw eyes, but if you're making a sunglass holder, then you really gotta pay attention to the size of the glasses, most about five and a half inches, as well as the slack in the line from the weight of the sunglasses on them. So a safe call is around six and a half, seven inch spacing in between your screw eyes. Also account for at the bottom of the frame, you know, not having the sunglasses hang lower than the bottom of the frame. Once you've got all the screw eyes attached, the next thing to do is to take your twine or thin leather strips or whatever you're using to tie the project together and get that started. The way I like to do this is I keep it clamped up just the way it is. I take my material, I tie a knot in the bottom screw eye, and then I stretch the material up to the top screw eye and snip it, making sure that I've got enough material to tie a knot into the top screw eye without having to struggle to get that knot tied. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. I had a blast making it. Hopefully you liked it, hopefully you learned something, and if that's the case, go ahead and hit that like button or touch it gently if that's more your style. Hit the dislike button if you don't wave the cards that bitch you pack, and subscribe because I'm going to try to come out with a new, cheap, easy DIY video every week or two, so you do not want to miss out on that. And I think that pretty much covers it, other than Sawdust Dave, signing out. Now, for this build, all I used was one eight foot, one by two. You could use a one by four and rip it down, or cut a tree down with an ax. I don't really care how you do it, as long as you treat the lumber with respect.